Hey, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you a super simple setup for a Zettelkasten in Tana. A Zettelkasten is a way of taking notes on the things you read, and it makes synthesis later, so writing about the things you have read much easier and can actually feel like you're talking to someone about the topic. At least that's how Nicholas Luhmann, the inventor of the Zettelkasten or slip box in English, described his interaction with the methodology and with the physical object itself. You might also know the Zettelkasten or slip box method or idea from Zünke Arendt's a phenomenal book, How to Take Smart Notes. So the idea of a Zettelkasten is that you take individual notes and that these notes contain just single pieces of information, single ideas and nothing more. And then what you do is you connect these nodes together in like a network. And this network is then going to help you later as you want to synthesize everything that you've read, everything that you've thought about, because that network will let you allow to go from one idea to the next very organically. And that's much better than if you have your notes in the margins of individual papers or books, or if you have them in a notebook here, a notebook there, and then some um, just random pieces of paper, post-its flying around the office, right? By putting them in all into one location and connecting them, they can kind of grow inward and get like a really dense network that then later helps you synthesize. So basically what this allows is a non-linear organization of nodes that can make problem solving and creative thinking much easier and better. Now, Tana is perfect for building a Zettelkasten. So let's jump right in and I'm going to show you how to set up your own Zettelkasten inside Tana. So here we are and these four super tags that you see here are everything that you need. Obviously, when you read things to take notes on, you have sources, right? So that's why we have a very bare bones source super tag here. This is nothing special in its setup here. You can use whatever source tag you have in your own, it just has title, author, and year. Nothing, nothing special. This is not really part of the Zettelkasten method yet. Now, the first thing is the fleeting note. That's a concept from the Zettelkasten. And what the fleeting note is, is basically just any thought um, you have. It's just a mere reminder of what's in your head, right? You, that's really something um, you scribble down as you are going into bed and you have like an idea, you scribble it down on a piece of paper. That's a fleeting note, right? And you want to put these um, into Tana, but they're nothing you're necessarily going to keep forever. You can delete these if you've gone through them, nothing special uh, here yet. But they're very important because they allow you to have like a, a general inbox where everything you think just lands and you can review it. So let's look at how that is set up in Tana and it's actually really easy. So let me open up the super tag here. It's empty, right? Uh, fleeting notes don't have any attributes, nothing you need for the template. Um, it's just a simple tag and that's it. Now, the next thing are literature nodes. So what are literature nodes? Literature nodes are the notes you take while you're reading. So they're short summaries of a paragraph or a chapter or an idea that um, you read about. Um, in your own words and you want to be very selective what you make as a literature note um, and you also don't just want to copy in text from um, a source, you want this um, literature note to be your summary of an idea, right? And you also want to be very careful because you want to um, be able to tell where an idea came from that you have this, it linked to the source um, where you have that idea from and ideally even the actual location. So um, let's look into how the literature node is set up. Uh, it has in its template here 
a source, which is a field that links to the source tag. So it's, it is an instance field that we have here. And then a location that's a plain um, anything field, a plain field, the page number, the Kindle location, or wherever you have something from. And then the third thing are permanent notes. Now, what are permanent notes? Permanent notes are your thoughts independent of any source, right? Something where you have synthesized and you've said, okay, given what I've read, like what's a what's an idea that I'm coming up with here, right? Um, it's basically your idea. It might rely on other things, but it is your idea. And you, that's the way you want to write it. You want to write it as if you were writing for someone else. So in full sentences, um, you want to disclose sources, be precise, clear, brief, uh, something that is easily understandable, even when you don't have the context of just having read in a book anymore, right? Even a year down the line, you see the note, you want to uh, be able to understand what it is about. So let's look at how that super tag um, is set up. So we have here the permanent note um, and it has two fields, one for topic. I really like this because it allows me to collect uh, ideas on overarching uh, topics and then a related notes field. Um, this is an instance field of a permanent note field, right? So here I can link um, different permanent notes together. And the topic field, just to cover that, is an options field. Um, so it is going to auto collect values as options. That's very handy uh, as well. All right, and that is how the super tags are set up, right? So we have a source because we're doing kind of literature work in whatever way, shape or form, could be movies, doesn't matter. Um, we have fleeting notes just for your thoughts um, that aren't important in the sense that you will reuse them years down the line. Uh, we have literature notes that are closely linked to insights you generate from whatever you're reading, right? Like they're linked to the source um, that you are reading and the page for example, where you came up with the idea based of what the author was writing, short summaries, um, in your own words, not just quotes. And then we have permanent notes and permanent notes are your synthesis of something based on what you have read. Um, they interlink with each other and you want to write these in a way that makes it easy to understand and read uh, years down the line, right? So full sentences, context independent, for someone else, basically. So let's jump into a demo and see how that works in practice. So we have here a source, History of the University in Europe. Um, and as I mentioned, super easy, super tag, don't bother with this, use your own uh, title author year just to make this example work. And then we have our notes, right? So here's an example of uh, a fleeting note, just an idea I was, or a question I was uh, coming up with uh, while I was reading the book. Doesn't matter, could be anywhere, um, but it is good to have because I have it in my inbox. I can uh, look at all my fleeting notes and see, okay, um, is there anything I want to generate out of that uh, later on? Now here I have three different literature notes that are generated from the book that I'm reading, right? So here I have linked the source, the book that I'm reading, including the page number. So uh, German professors started out as uh, Privatdozenten, who were allowed to teach but had to do so on their own cost. Then German university professors could choose whatever university they wanted. Universities competed for them, basically. Again, um, same page as the um, idea before. And then a note from me where I'm expanding um, on this a little bit. And then German professors had a share in the fees students paid. Um, that meant more students, more pay for a professor, right? Um, and this is then a different location somewhere else in the book. Okay, so I've read the book, I've written down these um, ideas, took my own notes, my own words, and then I'm coming up with 
permanent notes, right? So the one I have here, um, the incentive structure for professors has changed dramatically since the early days of the German university system. Pre professors were much more free agents in a way with strong incentives to attract students um, compared to today, right? So this is a permanent note. So here I have for the topic, the role of professors. And when I created this permanent note, um, no related notes, um, but I have referenced here the literature notes that I created above so that I can have these as context for where this permanent note and idea came from, right? And I've done this a second time here. Um, education YouTubers are like the Privatdozenten of yore. They teach on their own cost and they have a strong incentive to teach well so to attract more students, right? And that's an idea I have from two um, of the literature notes that I created above. And I have a related note, which is the incentive structure for professors. And that means I can always come back or expand um, where I want to go when I visit this particular permanent note. And of course, if I go to this, I have here um, in the references, a appears as related notes in education YouTubers are like a uh, private thing, right? So I have immediately a network of notes that I can expand on um, and that I can work with um, down the line. Very good. Now, the other thing that Tana of course does is something that the normal Zettelkasten, as Luhmann conceptualizes it in terms of a paper-based slip box, right? We, write little note cards and you put them in. Um, Tana can do something a paper slip box can't, which is do searches, right? And those searches can be really powerful. So let's look into that a little bit more. So one thing I can do, for example, is I can just look at all my literature notes, right? I can say, okay, make me a live search where I'm looking for literature notes. And then I can filter these by source, for example, and that is in itself already really convenient. The same I can do for permanent notes, of course, and then I can filter these, for example, right, for the topic education YouTuber, right? And then I have all my permanent notes related to that specific topic, and that's also really powerful. And the third thing that we can do is we can do just plain text searches, right? So if I'm doing a research project and I remember, okay, a couple of years ago, um, I read a bit about the history of the university system and there was this German word Privatdozent, right? Like, can I find this? Of course you can. You create a live search, you just type in the word Privatdozent and Tana will give you a list of all the nodes, whether they're literature nodes or permanent nodes that have that word, right? And of course, I can do that here as well, right? So I can go to the literature nodes and say, I want all the literature nodes that mention Privatdozent, right? Done and boom, there's only one left. So this is a super simple system for taking notes in Tana, makes it really easy um, to just jot down your um, thoughts in the form of fleeting notes, get like summary ideas from literature notes and then kind of pack these together in permanent notes. It makes it really easy to find them um, again. If you like this video, make sure to check out this video where I'm showing you another very advanced note-taking system in Tana using the question claim evidence framework. Um, people really like that, so make sure to check that out. And then of course, like, subscribe and hit that bell if you want to have more content on Tana um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.